Arguably, the most natural and powerful form of learning is through experience, or more precisely, through reflection on doing. Also called experiential learning, it's what prima ballerinas do after their performance at the National Opera. But it also happens to boys that are sad because their father got angry when they played football in the living room. By the age of one, we all had our own painful encounter with experiential learning when we tried to walk, failed, fell, and cried like, well, a baby. And even though this was an unpleasant and discouraging exercise that lasted for months, in the end, we all made it. How is that possible? As soon as we fell and the first shock was over, our brain unconsciously began to make sense out of all the information available to identify how this embarrassment occurred. It remembers that when we pushed ourselves up, everything was fine. Our feet on the floor, our arms in position, and our head and shoulders upright. Ready to go. When our upper leg muscles pulled our left foot 12.3% to the front, at an angle of 23 degrees, our arms didn't complement the movement and the ventricles in the inner ear, responsible for static balance, got confused for a second. When at the same moment the cat ran by, our eyes sent an alarming signal to the hippocampus and we completely lost it. Ouch! Unconsciously, this is how our brain analyzes the relationship of events within our body or in the environment. It happens all the time as we learn to walk, talk, kiss, function in a fancy office, or dance the salsa. Once we understand the connections between what went wrong, we know what we need to change when we try the next time. Experiential learning can also be used explicitly to learn a new skill, or to become better at what we already love doing. Here is how it works. First, get yourself into a situation to experience. After, reflect on what happened. Then, try to understand the relationships to form an abstract concept. If I do A, I get B. Last, decide what to do differently next time. Then, do it again. Experiential learning is also believed to be responsible for the fact that musicians generally fare better at most tests, regardless of what they measure. People that practice an instrument not only engage their brain in motor, visual and auditory areas, but they also learn by reflecting on what they're doing with a fast feedback loop. A wrong tone on the violin sounds too terrible to remain unnoticed. While playing, they therefore not only learn to make music, but also that progress in general comes through practice, reflection, understanding and repetition. You can use it with your friends or colleagues when working on a project. Silicon Valley startups do it when they tell their developers to get out of the building. After the interaction with real potential customers, the team gets together, analyzes the feedback, and decides what to do next. Tell us, what do you think? Is learning through reflecting on doing only good when acquiring new hands-on skills? Or is it also suitable to study science, math, the humanities, or abstract art?